the initial interest of the group, you're going to be looking for birds that, you know, when you make that first sequence of calls, they're either going to start shading away or they're going to shade towards you. If they're coming at you and they don't like it, they're going to get a little higher. They're not going to be as interested. Now, part of the group may get higher, part of it may get lower. You're going to run with your lower group then because they're maybe locked up, showing a little more interest, coming a little more to your calls. So in this clip, we've got a, a group of gadwalls that come in. You know, it's early in the morning. There's, uh, you know, just five, six, seven gadwalls. And uh, in the background, you see a few singles. They're coming in first thing in the morning. Chances are, you know, we scouted there. We knew there was birds in there the night before. If they're coming in first thing in the morning, chances are they were there the night before. Now, when that happens, the gadwalls were our interest group. They came in without any calling. They were one of the first groups in. Without any calling, they came in, they were locked, they were looking, and so we knew that we needed light calling. Didn't need a whole lot of screaming at them. And you know, even though we had those few floating around in the back, the gadwalls were our main interest. We use a little less calling. They made a few extra passes, which that's where your patience comes in. We knew that they were interested. We knew they were there the night before. You know, they was going to come in. You just hit them with a little light calling, hit them on the corners, and just keep them interested in you. You know, sometimes you'll get a single duck to commit. Sometimes you'll get the whole group to commit. Sometimes you'll get a single that peels out and leads the whole group away. You know, this doesn't just happen when you're set up there under them. Scout them the night before, you'll see them do it on their own as well. You know, it's easy to get greedy and sit on the whole flock and wait on them, but there comes a point where you've got to determine when it's time. You know, are you going to sit there and wait on the flock? Are you going to shoot the first few in? It's really, there's no right or wrong answer to it.
So you're going to want to find that duck or that small group of ducks and you're going to want to focus on calling at them. You get the one to commit and chances are the rest are going to follow. When they make their turn for a second look, three new ducks appear and are now leading the way and are lower. They're showing interest, so those are the birds we're calling to now. Part of the original flock comes in to uh, cut them off and lead the way. We're in a field. Ducks are very aggressive and territorial when it comes to food. You know, you get the first few interested and the group that lost interest or the group that's off a little ways away, all of a sudden they're going to start showing interest. They change their mind. They want to get in there and get the food with the group that just committed. Dude, we got to kill that. So <laughs> right over us. In this one, we started with the uh, no one's home approach, and you see the ducks start to drift a little bit. And when they start to drift, we get aggressive with them and try to get any of them to turn and look and come back, have another look at us. We gotta kill that. Uh see all the birds stop flapping for a minute and then almost all of them start again. You hit the comeback call and then the back few stay locked and then the rest turn to follow with them. Come right over us. We're always looking for the, you know, the initial interest bird that shows the interest and it's really easy to key in on that bird and get fixed on that bird, you know, but as the next pass goes around, that might not be your interest bird anymore. That's where your communication comes in. You're going to talk to your buddy, say, hey, you know, this five on the left is looking a little better than the initial three that's now at the back. It's easy to stay on those first few and watch them thinking that they're gonna be the ones to do it. But in the end, it might not be those first few. It could be the other half of the group that just decided that they wanted to beat them down there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got the whole group, we got the whole group. Being too greedy. I'm being too greedy for this last few minutes. <laughs> yep. Right up here in the middle. Just shoot bodies.
Kill him. You don't want to be stuck on a flock that's leaving. You don't want to be screaming at them, trying to get them to come back, and then another group comes out of nowhere and you're still screaming at them. You're going to end up losing all of them. You hear a guy calling loud at these ducks. Then you hear a guy. He says to him, hold on, we got another group. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got the whole group. We got the whole group. You quiet your calls down. You let the new group take over. You're being too greedy. If you can key in on that, never fails, you're going to get a few birds in range. Then you got to decide whether it's time to take them or work on the next group. Every once in a while you get the whole group to commit, there's no questioning. You focus in on your interest birds and that's what you key in on. These will stay. It isn't necessarily the closest or the lowest bird that's showing the most interest. You've got to visually see which birds are showing the most interest. You've got to adjust your calling and that'll make all the difference when you're working big groups of ducks.